Hi, this is a Sony 3 band radio ICF F12S. Previously, we did a medium wave band scan on this, and today we will be doing uh, a short wave band scan. This is gonna be a long video because this radio is outperforming with all the radios that I have tried on short wave. So let's not delay. Uh, let's you know just turn on the radio and I'll show you how brilliant this radio performs. Uh, I've done the shoot at 5.30 pm in the evening. Evening, I don't think uh, there will be uh, any major station uh, below 9 megahertz. I'm not skipping to 9 megahertz directly because this is something which can surprise you anytime. But the frequency above 9 megahertz is what will surprise you and I'm sure you will enjoy uh, listening to all the multiple stations that this can get to easily. After this point of time, uh, I want you to uh, enjoy the scan that uh, will be run here after. And I'll meet you at the end of the short wave band scan. And if I went to one of the scenes, there might be a third group Thank you. 
cooperation in the infrastructure project all over the world. But uh, of course, uh, my personal view is that I'm very pessimistic, not optimistic about the U.S. nature project because first, uh, is not capable to do such project outside of the U.S. Because in the U.S. itself, they have many projects that they downgraded in many years. They need renovation, new construction. So, and also, the administration from China has a try to get the uh, financing support budget from the Congress to to carry a uh, six thirty US dollar but it's so difficult to get their funding from the government. So it took already too long time to make such decisions. So as I, I have so many friends in the United States they told me that they missed the work. Next year, ten years later you come here and my road is still the same as before. So being with Crichton is very serious in the United States decision making. This is a very challenging for the U.S. administration. The European countries also, all these politicians, they are not really interested to help this uh, European countries because they are very anxious to get the vote. If the, before the voting of the election, they have always promised too much, but they have done too less. This is the totally different as China. It's the Chinese economy. Well, China is almost all of this world. So this is totally different. That's why right. the Chinese It did not move for a long time. It was another gray day. Half of his last blanket had been used for foot wrappings. He wanted to find Bill's trail. It was not a point. Africa's second most populous nation, 
Ethiopians are again left wondering why the federal government failed to protect them from the violent side of the country's ethnic tensions and why ethnic minorities in a federal system based on identity are left so vulnerable. The Amhar Association of America said it has confirmed. <laughs>
uh, shortly after this uh, decision was announced, in fact, even before it was announced, there were people gathering outside the court there uh, demonstrating. <laughs> The lead to that potential ruling came out, what was it, six weeks ago or so. There's been uh, uh, fencing all around the Supreme Court, just uh, basically uh, uh, suggesting that the febrile atmosphere uh, that we've had over this momentous decision that was going to come down. And I can tell you, we just moved a little bit away from the crowd because uh, there's this kind of uh, 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 really giving a speech and being sort of shouted down. But the atmosphere here uh, generally is a majority uh, of supporters of Roe v. Wade. They're very angry with the Conservative majority. Now, that was a 63 majority vote. Uh, all three of Trump, the Green Court nominees voted to overturn.
Barbara Platosher reporting from Washington, underlining two versions of America, as she puts it. Well, let's stay in Washington. We're going to join Daniel Lipman from Politico. He covers the White House and the world of Washington politics. Good morning to you, Daniel Lipman. Thank you, Lise. How are you? Fine. Now, this historic ruling uh, will be played out state by state when it comes to abortion rights. Can you give us an overview about how it will look across the country? So we're looking at, you know, in the range of 20 states uh, that are uh, going to ban abortion or where abortion is already banned as of today. Uh, you know, these are mostly red states. Um, and there are some states that have put on these anti-abortion laws uh, decades ago, uh, and they now have to look at what's going to happen to them. So that's, you know, Michigan, uh, Arizona, where... Uh, they were not expecting Roe v. Wade to ever fall. They thought there would be precedent. And so sometimes there's a state with a Democratic governor and a Republican legislature. Uh, and so it's going to be a complicated mess as states try to figure out what to do. Uh, and as they face a public, which is sharply divided in this issue. But if you look at the polls, the majority of Americans were against what the court did yesterday. In light of that, is there anything that can be done legally, politically, on the federal level, President Joe Biden was very quick to condemn the overturning of Roe v. Wade. There's just not that much that uh, they can do on the federal level, uh, only stuff on the edges. Uh, you know, they, you know, they might try to get Congress to appropriate more money, uh, or at least some money in the first place. Uh, for women who are in red states, you need to travel to uh, blue states where abortion is legal. Um, states like California, Oregon, Washington State will become important because they're pretty close to uh, the states like Idaho, uh, and the Dakotas, uh, which uh, have basically banned abortion. And so uh, there's going to be tons of travel across interstate lines, but this will affect mostly minority women and poor women who don't have the resources um, and may not, you know, uh, are not in a position to get the health care that they feel they deserve. It hardly needs saying, but the pro-life and the abortion lobby, very strong across the country. Do they have other legal tools, for example, that they could actually ban the interstate travel that you talked about, that they will, we've already heard warnings, that they will work in the states, uh, the states controlled by Democrats, where they will try to have this kind of a ban implemented, followed right across the country? Well, just as Kavanaugh has said that... Um in, in the ruling that this was not going to, you know, interstate travel is a constitutional right. Uh, I think the broader point is that uh, this just becomes almost two separate countries in terms of uh, in one set of states, uh, women have certain rights and then another, they have, uh, you know, fewer rights. And so that's going to make the country more, even more partisan, because if you're a liberal woman, uh, you know, why would you want to go to Emory University in Georgia to study and potentially stay in Atlanta for work, uh, whereas, uh, you, you know, if you need an abortion, you would not be able to uh, early. And so uh, that's going to make the country more divided because you're going to have even fewer Democrats in those red states and fewer Republicans in, in the blue states who don't want to, um, you know, live amongst people who are liberal. And very quickly, Danny, you mentioned Brett Kavanaugh. There's been notes released that of his conversations with Susan Collins, a Republican from Maine, during his confirmation hearings, which suggested he would not seek to overturn Roe v. Wade. Does this have any weight? Well, I think it's for, more for the historical record. That these are footnotes in terms of uh, the justices who uh, were uh, approved by Collins and uh, other senators. Uh, who made these promises, and that there's no way to legally enforce them. And so uh, those senators uh, feel like they were misled, and people who uh, take a different position feel like those senators almost wanted to be misled to uh, vote for these justices. Daniel Lippman, thank you for joining us um, early in the morning from Washington. Barbara Sandler is going to join us now. She's the Senior Director of Clinical Services for Whole Women's Health in the state of Texas, a reproductive health care clinic. Marva Sadler, thank you for joining us. 
Yes, hello. Thank you for having me. So have abortions, legal abortions, stopped completely now in the state of Texas? Unfortunately, yes, they have. We unfortunately had to turn patients away who were in the building for their appointments yesterday um, and cancel any patients who were on the schedule um, until we have further clarification. Your website says the Supreme Court just turned its back on abortion rights. We never will. What can you do? You know, thank you for asking that because that's absolutely where we've shifted to and what we're focusing, focusing on is what we can do. And what we can do is continue to be a beacon of light, continue, continue to be a resource for women. Um, as we've stated before, um, you can travel out of state for an abortion. We do know that this will not be easy and we want to be here to help women figure that out um, and to find their way to safe and uh, legal abortion care. I mean, what kind of shape could that take? For, for example, could you form partnerships with reproductive health care clinics in other states so that you can arrange for abortions to formalize this kind of cooperation? Absolutely. Unfortunately, in Texas, we've had a snippet of what it was going to look like for women having to travel outside of their home state an abortion with the enactment of um, State um, Senate Bill 8 on September the 1st of 2021. And so since that time, we have developed programs at Whole Woman's Health, like our Wayfinder program, to do just that, to help women find their way and connect them with our, pay with our clinics um, in our haven states, in Virginia, in Baltimore, Maryland, um, to Bloomington, Minnesota, and South Bend, Indiana. You, of course, see day in, day out the women who come to you, who have been coming to you for abortions. Now that they will no longer have that right, what do you fear? My biggest fear is that women will feel supported and feel like this is the end and that there is no hope. And while the day is super gloomy, um, yesterday was probably one of the most devastating um, news days for us ever in this movement. Not probably, it absolutely was. Um, we want to make sure that we can pass the message along to our patients and to our future patients and their, and their future patients after that, that all hope is not lost. I don't want women to revert back to the stigmatic dark place of having to take matters into their own hands unsafely. I cannot express enough that Texas has turned its back on us um, with at least 20 other states turning their back on their residents as well, but we will not. Thank you very much, Marva Sadler. And no doubt we'll continue to stay in touch with you, Senior Director of the Clinical Services for Whole Women's Health in the state of Texas, a state where abor abortions are no longer allowed. Coming up on News Hour, 75 years since Anne Frank's diary was published. We hear about some of the impact it's had. Nelson Mandela and members of the African National Congress while imprisoned on Robben Island during uh, South Africa's apartheid uh, greatly treasured their one copy of Anne Frank's diary, which was one of uh, just a handful of books they had in the terrible They read the copy so many times that it fell apart, so they rewrote it by hand. A teenager's horror and hope in the midst of the Holocaust. That's later on News Hour. And just to remind you of our top stories this hour, Russia has launched a barrage of missiles at targets in the north and the west of Ukraine. And Oslo's annual Pride Parade has been cancelled after a deadly attack on a gay nightclub. We'll have more on that in a moment. You're listening to News Hour. I'm Lise Doucette and we're live from the BBC in London. We're going to stay with our top story. As we've been reporting, clinics are now closing in some U.S. states after the Supreme Court ruling on Friday removed uh, the constitutional right to abortion for American women. About half of American states are expected... <laughs>
of an abortion a a lack of privacy um i mean is that what it comes down to does this discussion come down to syntax um it comes down to syntax much like the syntax was of those clips that you played they're parsing the language really really narrowly i mean they're slicing it so thin you can almost see through it uh clearly uh, everyone knew going in that these justices all three of them had histories of being hostile to reproductive rights and they kind of parsed and fudged and weaved and dodged in order to get past the headlines but pretty much everyone in that committee hearing knew that these three were intent on overturning Roe. President, uh, former President Trump said so when he nominated them, that I am committed to finding justices who will overturn Roe. I don't know how much claim you can make it. Uh, certainly it was for the record that they were parsing and, and, and kind of bobbing and weaving. But, you know, the, the outcome is clear and the outcome was predicted as soon as... <laughs> Isn't this a performer? I loved her. I love the scan that I did on shortwave. And every bit, every move on the dial was just another station. Very crisp, clear. The sound quality and the way it locks to the station. Everything was perfect. It, I can say this was the best scan that I did on shortwave on an analog radio. This is a complete performer. Please let me know about the video. Please share your suggestions uh, in the comment section. And also let me know if you want me to do unboxing or a review of any particular radios. Thank you all for your time. Please keep listening to the radio and you guys have a good time.